years old. So he's um, very well known. Um, and obviously, if you haven't played The Elder Scrolls, Talos is uh, often considered one of the nine divines, um, part of the uh, pantheon of Damriel, the most popular pantheon of Damriel. So he's also considered to some as a god. So he's a very important figure, and I just thought it would be fun to talk about his life and Thum, you have dragon blood and you are considered to be a ruler of men. 
so he's a little bit more ruthless in the second telling of his biography uh, in comparison to the first one. And I guess that's why the second one is called Hearsay, because they're like, oh no, Diver Septim would never do anything like that, but who knows. Another thing that is constantly debated is what is his race, because it's never established, you know. Um, so in the first, uh, it's definitely known that he was not an elf, so he was not myrrh, and he was not beast folk, so he was definitely a man of some kind. So, if he was from the kingdom, island kingdom of Alcair, then he was most likely a Breton person, half man, half elf, and there is evidence to support that claim, but he also could have been from Atmora, which means that he would either be an Atmoran or a Nord, but it's not specified, we don't know. Um, so, he is either a Breton, a Nord, or an Atmoran, but also... It is stated that um, the last ship from Admora came in the 68th year of the First Era, and most of the people on that ship were already dead. But the 68th year of the First Era was 3,680 years before he was born. So I find it extremely unlikely that he was actually born on Admora. Maybe he was born in Northern Skyrim like on an island or something, and then he sailed down from there. But honestly, I think it's more likely that Diaper Septim was actually a Breton. Not because of his use of magic or anything, but the fact that he's such a good diplomat, and he was very good at, um, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Conquering places, which is not a very Breton thing, but the use of his power, the way that he kind of spread it out among people. I don't know, for some reason that reminds me of a Breton. Maybe I'm wrong. But it's also just more likely that he was actually born in Alcair. Um, because then he would have access to the rest of the continent. He would actually have an interesting conflict in the nord Iraq conflict. It's a bit weird that he wouldn't be fighting on the side of the Bretons. But I'm not going to challenge it. I don't know, for some reason it seems more likely to me that he was a Breton than a Nord. But the Nords disagree, so. But they always disagree. Something about Tiber Septim is that his actually his direct bloodline was lost when Pelagius was killed. So his grandson Pelagius was his heir to the throne, but he was killed three years after his initial um, rule, and he, he was replaced by Kintyra, Empress Kintyra, who was Tiber Septim's cousin. I believe she was the granddaughter of Tiber Septim's uh, brother, who I briefly mentioned, but. Technically, his bloodline died with Martin Septum during the Oblivion Crisis, and now, as far as we know, there are no more bloodlines. As far as we know, there are no other bloodlines related to Diaper Septum. So yeah, another thing is that an avatar of Diaper Septum appears in the 427th um, year of the Third Era as a man by the name of Wolf, W-W-U-L-F, and Wolf aids the Nerevarine by giving his lucky ring to help the Nerevarine defeat Dagoth Ur. There are also just tons of conflicting reports about Tiber Septum. Um, you know, none of this information is actually confirmed. We know that he fought certain battles, and we know that he conquered the entire continent of Damriel. But how he did it is definitely debated. Where he's from is debated. Um, who his followers were is debated. Why he did what he did is debated. Um, because he does have a strong change in character over time. You know, Faber Septim is kind of depicted as a general in the beginning who, who just happened to be working in the army. But, you know, over time his character does change from this kind of up-and-coming soldier into an extreme conqueror, and maybe you could argue that's just what happens, but it's also like he didn't have any desire for power in the beginning, so why does he have desire for power towards the end? And then you could say everybody desires power, but it, I don't know, it's just like, he's just such like a mythological character at this point, so it's like, who actually knows what he did other than conquer the continent of Tamriel? It's not like that was a continent-wide hallucination that happened. We just don't know really what the man was like. Um, I mean, we have descriptions, but, you know, we'll never really know. It's unknown why he killed his battle mage Ar Arctis, because he did kill his battle mage Zorin Arctis, but we don't know why. You know, another unknown thing. And the Mandela. So, 
actually knows what was used to power him. We believe it was someone's life force, but it is debated whose. We don't know who actually had their life force taken away to power it. So, yeah. I mean, there were tons of prophecies about a dragonborn who would take over the entire continent before he was born. But, um, you know, nobody really knows. But that's all the information I actually have on Diverseptum. I know it seems like very little, but I mean, that's his whole life summed up, as far as we know. Because, like I said, he is kind of like this mythological character. It's unknown whether any of this is true, or whether his name just was Diverseptum, and all of these stories are made up. Because, I mean, it's not like it hasn't happened before, you know? Especially in ancient Rome, for instance. Uh, Emperor Augustus, who was uh, Julius Caesar's heir to the throne, it's unknown what he was actually really like because so much of what was written about him was propaganda. So a lot of this stuff could be propaganda from the Third Empire. Um, so we don't actually know what his character was like. Most likely, I think he was a Breton man who for somehow, somehow got in charge of the um, Empire with the help of Kula Kain. I don't know if he assassinated him though. I don't know because I don't know anything about his actual character. I only know what was written about him. And unfortunately, I think that's how it's going to remain unless we get an Elder Scrolls game where we are actually able to interact with Piper Septim himself. But yeah, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I would love to know your opinions on something like this. I think this is like one of the perfect subjects where we can just talk about different theories and stuff. Personally, I agree more. Well, that's not true. I agree with the fact that he's born in High Rock. I don't think he was born in Admora. But for the rest of it, that's like all I got. I don't know anything else. But if there is someone who is more well versed on this subject, which there definitely is, and if you happen to be watching this video, please tell me in the comments below what you think about Diaper Septum or Talos, because I would really like to know. And if you're not super well versed on the subject, just tell me your opinion in the description or in the comments. Oh my god, I always say description because I would very much like to read it. I do my best to respond to all comments regardless of what they are. So anyway, that's it. That's Diaper Septum. He conquered all of Damriel with the help of the, new, uh, with the, help of the new medium and many advisors and administrators. Um, and the Third Empire was under the rule of Septums for, what, 400 years, 500 years? I don't know how long. Long time. Um, and he's one of the most important and most popular characters in all of Damrielic history for obvious reasons. 